Hey everybody and welcome to Outdoor Adventures with Case. So uh, today uh, we're doing a bit of an indoor uh, episode and uh, this is all about the rig I use when I'm surf casting. So I get a lot of comments, a lot of messages, a lot of people asking me to uh, do some videos on how I make my rigs. Um, now really important with this video there's um, I'm going to break down the rig, I'm going to show you the knot that I use but also um, at the end of the video you're going to see why that rig is really important. So important that you watch the entire um, video and that will just give you a really good understanding and, and I suppose glimpse at um, a surf casting rig that's been doing well uh, by me. Now important to note that this surf casting rig has many many variations so um, there are different styles, different techniques, different ways that people are doing it. Um, by all means, you know, uh, comment below. I don't um, assume to know it all. I don't ever state that I, I know it all. Um, I'm still learning as well, but um, I've, I've learned a few things that have done okay by me. So um, this is all about sharing. And look, if you've got some, some variations to it that you'd like to add to the comments below, please feel free to do so. Um, the more we can, um, I suppose, help those around us, the better. This is a breakdown of the trace. So basically, I've got a circle hook on the end, and um, I like to use a circle hook in the business end of this rig simply because um, the way the rig is designed, it's going to, um, it's just going to, to sit nicely in the, in the corner of the fish's mouth, and the rig is going to be able to aid me in doing that. So again, watch to the end of this video because it's going to help you out. Um, I've got a sliding keeper hook, and that's a uh, mustard octopus uh, six bar row, um, and that's a suicide hook for my keeper. And this is a demon eight bar row mustard hook um, at the business end. I've also got two beads, um, that's just to provide a little bit of lift in the bait so that it's up in that, that current moving around nicely um, and keeps it away from the crabs and that sort of stuff as well. Um, and then got my swivel on the end of that there. The knot that I use on both ends, very simple, uni knot, um, improved uni knot. So that, that's the, the knot that I find has been, it's worked really well for me. And um, it's strong. Uh, the rig that I've, I've made, this one here is, is 80 pound trace. I'm typically out there targeting those big snapper. Um, and if I'm out there during the day off the rocks, I'll also chuck out a whole piper, but rig it in a way that it's going to really move quite nicely in the in the in the, the current. So I need this to be pretty hardy, especially around the rocks. Um, so yeah, this is an 80 pound trace now. Um, that's the trace end of it. Again, hook, keeper hook, a couple of beads. Don't have to have them. Some people use um, skirting, all of that sort of stuff. Completely up to you guys. Make it work for you. Match the bait color. Match what's been going on out there in front of you. Um, reports that you hear different things like that and uh, yeah have a bit of fun with it because I'm using traces that that are clipped onto the main line uh, main part of the rig you can have a few different things going and try variety uh, try different baits different size baits different um, skirting obviously colors all of that sort of stuff um, so this rig's really good in that way um, and let's get the backbone of the rig out so this is the um, clip, e uh, clip swivel at the end here and this is the part that I'll attach to that trace that I showed you a second ago so that clips on there like so very good for like I was saying earlier having a variety of rigs sitting on your chili bin on your bait board ready to go swap it out if one of the brothers catches a snapper down the beach on a pilly and you're using squid nothing's happening on yours you can often wind it in real fast chuck a pilly out on it and away you go, you're, you're fishing to what's working out there. But if you haven't got multiple traces ready, it can just clip on and off. You do spend a lot of time on the beach um, wasted. So I do recommend using a clip in the middle there. Um, and again, uni knots all the way through this rig. Um, I know a few different knots, but I, I find that, that rule, that's, it's done me really well um, in this rig. And uh, yeah, very easy to learn. So. Um, after the clip swivel, there is a swivel that slides up and down the backbone of this rig. Now, that is the, the part of the rig that goes to your main line. So, um, something that's really um, important about this part here is um, 
when a fish picks up your bait, for example. So that's sitting in the sand, fish picks up your bait, runs with it, as soon as that swivel hits your bead there, as soon as that hits, that means that the hook is going to get set inside the fish's mouth. So, um, in, in effect, the, the fish is going to strike on itself, really, um, which is something I find pretty cool about this rig. Um, and moving down the rig, um, I have another bead here. Now, with this um, bead here, you, you can put a bit of waterproof tape um, just above it, and that means that the bead's not going to go too far away from the impact shield, which is the next part down the backbone of the rig. And the reason why I like to have that um, sitting nice and close is that bead there is designed to float, okay? Um, also, Lumos, it's, it's a glowing bead. Um, but what that does is, uh, as soon as that hits the water, that bead is going to do its magic. It's going to float to the top of the impact shield, and it's going to push your hook out, all right? Because that's where the hook sits. And why would your hook sit in there, you ask? I'm glad you ask. Because that there is now nice and streamlined and with your bait on you can you can get this perfectly streamlined so that when that casts that's going to fly through the air with a lot less wind resistance I'm um, sorry but it also means that you're going to get that distance that you need um, and like I was saying earlier because you've got floats on your trace um, and beads on the main line all that that's needing to do you just that beads gonna hit the water float like it's it's designed to and your trace should, by effect, just pop out like so. Um, and then you're, you're fishing, all right? So that's the, the rig um, broken down real simple. I also have um, just under the impact shield. Um, now there are a lot of variations to this. There are a lot of different um, types of, of imp shields and um, clips, all of that sort of stuff that do the same thing. Um, some come really highly recommended as well. This is just one version um, that I use, and it is, it's done me okay. It, it, the bait sometimes does fly up uh, mid-cast, but for the most part, it's cheap, and it does the job for me. So, hey, it's one option for you. Again, feel free in the comments below to uh, chuck in the, the, the style that you're doing um, and contribute. So, uh, But underneath that impact shield, we have a genie clip. Um, so one of those bad boys there and what that does um, is it means that if I've cast out my rig and um, it's getting picked up by the current and, and moved down the beach um, I can pull that back in simply undo the sinker grab a, a bigger sinker here that's a four ounce this is a six ounce can clip that on real quick and I'm back into it cast that out and away we go um, something to note with this rig as well, um, it's important that your trace is slightly shorter than your backbone. And that is because you want that to sit nice and snug inside the impact shield, like I was saying earlier. Okay, And if it's too long, it's going to sit outside. Simple as that. Um, so, yeah. Make sure that your, your trace is shorter than your, your backbone. It doesn't have to be the long uh, a long trace at all. Um, certain areas I will have a slightly longer trace, which means I've got to have a, a longer backbone. But if you can get away with the cast and you can get that distance out there, not a problem at all. Um, another thing to note with these rigs, look, check the, the casting weight of your rod. Um, and remember the bait. Uh, that you're using is adding to that weight as well. A lot of people snap their rods surf casting and all of that because they're casting far too heavy a bait and they're putting a lot of power into it. So just check the cast weight of your rod um, and then just get your, your sinker size to, to fit that. Um, and have a look into the, the different types of rods that are out there. Uh, because I tell you what, there are some rods that can cast some some very decent um, weight as well. So that is a just a really brief breakdown of the rig. Um, very user friendly. Can change your sinkers at will. Can change your trace at will. Um, and it just means that the efficiency um, of your time fishing is, is used really, really well. Now, as you can imagine, I take two rods out. Um, one will be the heavy setup, with, like this one here, 80 pound, um, and I'm targeting the big snapper. 
um, kingfish from time to time. Um, but I, I, I'm, I'm using the heavy, heavy set gear. Um, and again, if you're using 80 pound trace, just remember, use a, thicker, uh, a heavier sinker, sorry. Um, and that's simply because the, the thicker your line, um, the diameter catches more of the current, which is more likely to be pushed down the beach. And then you don't want that, okay? So, thicker line, heavier sinker. Awesome. Now, the other thing is too, um, you can use this rig, this is a really cool rig for targeting things like Trevally, um, but just remember, if you're targeting Trevally, um, they are very, very shy and, and have very good eyesight. So um, shrink your trace um, size down. I use 30 pound trace to target trees and that does me really, really well. So yeah, just a little note there as well. Um, so that's the rig I prepared earlier. And uh, now I'm gonna show you how to make it. So just another note, um, or I suppose little tip for storing these rigs. Now, it, where you can, it's really it's a really good idea to make your rigs up the night before or just prior to your fishing trip. The last thing you want is to um, be out there making your rigs on the beach because that's fishing time. All right. So make your rigs up beforehand, and uh, it just means you're going to be able to fish out there and spend all your time trying to hit that fish. So, um, but I use these uh, these bait boards. You can use cardboard, all sorts of stuff um, to store them away. Um, but it just means, uh, what it's meant for me is um, I've got my rigs set up quite nicely. Um, I know exactly where they are. They sit in my bag really easy and um, are easy to access. Uh, and if you've got Ziploc bags as well, um, you can label them. Like I'll often just scribble on the bag. Uh, 80 pound trace, um, 8 bar hooks, da da da. Uh, and that just means that when I'm out there, I know exactly what I've got. Um, when I'm setting up my tackle bag to take it out with me, I'm taking the stuff I need, not excess stuff and not the wrong stuff. So, um, as you know, with, with fishing, you can get out there um, and you can be very excited and, and you can forget different things. But if it's all in bags, it's a matter of grabbing five or six bags, putting them inside your tackle box, inside your tackle bag, and off you go. So, yep, stick it inside the Ziploc bag. Scribble the detail that you want to put down on there, and that rig is set to go. So that's one rod taken care of right there, and again, make up those extra traces for it as well, and away you go. So, now we're going to get into making the rig. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show you now how to make the rig, and I'm gonna show you with one simple knot. I want to keep this as simple as possible, but trusted. Okay, so this is a, a knot that I've used. It's proven. It's caught me good fish. Um, there are variations to it, like I was saying before. And hey, by all means, comment below um, and add add some tips to the uh, thread as well. Definitely more than welcome to do so. Um, but let's get into it, eh? Let's get into it.